Hello everybody, welcome to our Craft TV Facebook Live. I'm so super excited. I um, launched this kit with you this morning. Wow, thank you everybody. It's been so, so busy. I'm not gonna do anything that I did this morning in this show because I want to show you new. So if you want to see more demonstrations, watch the other one back. And I got into proper trouble because, because it's our birthday and it's our first anniversary and we're, we're, we're just super excited. It, I said earlier it'd been a roller coaster. Actually, apparently it hasn't been a roller coaster. It's been a tsunami and we've been in the little boat right at the top of it, riding the crest of the waves. It's been amazing. And of course, I told you all about that, but I forgot to mention that anybody that spends over 25 pounds on the Highlight website actually gets a free gift. And at the moment, while stocks last, it's this USB. So anybody that bought this earlier, you will get a USB, looks like that. And um, this will be in your parcel. And in fact, I believe that most of those parcels have already been packed. How exciting is that? Now, I'm just gonna say hello to a few of you. Lorraine is in sunny Spain and apparently in Estepona and it's lovely and warm there. I love that part of Spain. Um, we've got, um, let's see, we've got Monica who's in Vancouver, wow. Um, we've got Sharon who's in Kirkby in Asheville, just up the road Sharon, just a nice to hear from you. Christine is in Vancouver too. Wonder if they know each other. Um, we've got Elizabeth, then we've got Little Hampton, all black thunderclouds and drizzling from Madeleine. Do you know it's absolutely beautiful here in Derbyshire? And then Penny is saying hello too. She's actually in Alabama. A big hello to all our US viewers. It's lovely to see you. And hello to Sh another hello to Sharon and another hello to Claire. And then I'll say hello to the rest of you in a little bit while, in a while. So let's show you, this is what we're gonna be doing. How gorgeous is this? And it's very, very easy to make, but I'm gonna show you that in a moment when I show you what we're gonna make it with. And it's our Crown and Glory collection. Now, it's exclusive to our fabulous Highlight Crafts. It's only available on our website. It's at a very, 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 very special price of $35.99 if you're a Robin Nester. And I know it says dispatch in two days, we're dispatching them today. I mean, and tomorrow. So we're gonna make sure that we get these out as fast as we possibly can. So let's just mention the acetate that we've got because this one is at 11.69 if you are a, cl a club member. Now we have got here 10 sheets of, it's not acetate, it's construction acetate. I'm gonna show you why you need it. It's become one of my favorite, favorite things. I didn't even notice the typo that um, Andrew has got there, but you know what? Never mind that, it's all about the product. Let's go on to what we've actually got. So I'm gonna show you what the dies are. And I'm super excited about these because they are not only timeless, but the colors are exquisite. And the team here, and I know Jess is on holiday with her friends over in Spain. And she's, uh, no, it's not Spain, she's in Malta, I beg your pardon. And she actually watched the show. So if you're watching now, go and sunbathe, get yourself a cocktail. Um, right, let's have a look. So here we've got the hummingbirds, absolutely beautiful, and the colors. Now, if you've ever seen a hummingbird in real life, they have like almost an iridescence on their tummy and their back. And we've tried to mimic that with the quality of the artwork that you've got here. You've got them just perching, but we've also got them with the wings. I will show you how to make these dimensional as part of the demonstration, but I'm also gonna show you how to make them fly. Then the next one we've got, now this is the lavateria. And earlier, I think I described it as um, a different flower and I don't remember the name of it now. But this one, actually, I was thinking about it because I was thinking, I've not, why am I thinking that the name of this flower, hibiscus, because you don't get those up here in Derbyshire, but 
the lavateria you do and you get them in different colors but this is the one that we've chosen to give you today it's even got little tiny detailed buds in and you can imagine those hummingbirds hovering for that lovely juicy nectar that we've got there this one is probably the most detailed and the most delicate dye that we've done to date it's our honeysuckle but the way that it's been designed you have got a piece here that you can snip out you've got a piece here you can snip out another flower bundle that you've got here that you can snip out and another one here so although it's one flower I could take this piece away and change the look and feel I can take that piece away and change the look and feel I can take that away and add more into it so again really really useful as a dye the next one is well love this it's like velvet when you touch it and in nature this lime green is so vibrant when the light and sunshine catches it that we've mimicked it right down here in those fresh leaves the stems are delicate and if you've ever touched a looping stem what you'll find is when you touch it they're almost um, hollow inside but the little buds as they open up are the flower head and just an exquisite finish then of course all of that we still need some foliage and the foliage has been very carefully chosen so if I take just one of those um, one of these and put it here look at how you've got the greens matching there when I bring it over here it's more tonal with these shades here and then if I bring the purple up to the top the purple picks up the blues in the eucalyptus so you're getting our foliage the lupins you're also going to get the honeysuckle you're going to get the lavatera and you're going to get the hummingbirds and you're going to get a free gift and we've got a great saving and we're going to ship this in the next 24 hours so what a great way of you being able to craft with something that's really brand new and exciting now if you want to get the very very best price we have got a robin's nest and it's a club for anybody that loves the look and feel of these products not only does it mean you get 10 percent off everything when you're shopping but you also get to come to special events we do special downloads we give you free delivery on orders over 25 pounds and today's bundle is over 25 so not only are you going to get free delivery but you're also going to get this fabulous usb and andrew can you remember what this was retailing at i think it was 21.99 so take that off the 30 here i'm in selly mode here aren't i take it off the 35 pounds listen we don't need to tell you you know it's a bargain right so everything's ready for me to start crafting so first of all look at my goodie box i want to say hello to everybody who's just joined us um can andrew can i just see everybody for a minute I'm just I'm, I'm gonna make this really quick guys but i just want to say wow thank you madeline kathleen angela carol christine lorraine claire donna um do you know thank you thank you thank you everybody there are so many of you please leave comments about anything you'd like to change anything that you would like to see more of anything you'd like to see less of feed this these are your hours so tell us what you'd like to change right now i am going to show you how we're going to put this together so first of all let me explain to you where the concept came from and I, I really want to try and teach you more about those sort of elements that I'm working with because, um, and I'm just going to put a piece of card behind it so you can see how much detail there is. Now, this acetate I've fallen in love with because most of the acetate that I've worked with in the past has either scratched or has gone cloudy when you've scored it and it's been a real frustration. This one doesn't scratch and it doesn't go cloudy. So I thought, what else can I do with it? And I've always wanted to make an acetate book. And that's what this is. It is actually an acetate book with a spine. So there is the spine. And it is so durable and sturdy that I can make it like this. 
So what's the next step after this one? Well, you've guessed it. I'm actually going to do another one where I'm gonna put more pages in it. But to start with, I'm actually gonna make the most of this one. So when we are scoring, really important, we don't use an embossing tool. This is what will happen if you use an embossing tool. I'm going to show you that, and this is probably the only thing that I'm going to show you again, but butt it up to the edge, to the butt bar, take your embossing tool, run it down there. Do you know, that's okay, but it hasn't scored it enough for it to actually crease. So I have to come back and I have to score it again to make it crease. And then you get this white line and you can see that white line there. You don't want that. It just doesn't look good and friendly. So what I want us to do is take a, um, a pokey tool and we're going to use the point of the pokey tool. And I'm just pushing it right into that score line. I'm, and that then, look at that. It holds its shape straight away. It's holding its shape. And does it mark it? Absolutely not. So then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just going to score it. Oops, make sure you stay in that score line because I didn't, I moved it out. And I'm just going to fold that. So now you can see there's my book. I've made that book before I even start to do anything else. And I've got a lovely deep spine on this one so I can get lots of detail and lots of dimension included in here. But the best thing is the pages will stay absolutely perfectly parallel without me having to support them anywhere. So I'm gonna move that out of the way and then show you how we're going to assemble it. Before I do, I'm just gonna make sure that this is gonna fit into my box. Absolutely it will. And what I love is putting it across diagonally because you get a really nice view of it from three, di three dimension. But it would also fit sideways as well. So we know that we're onto a winner. Now, how do we decide what goes on the front, what goes on the back, get the balance of the front and back elements? So I'm just going to lift this one up and talk to you about this part of it. So there is the front of the card and it actually looks quite sparse when you see it like this. I'm going to open this one up completely and just show you the back. And the back is much fuller, a lot more going on at the top, although the bottom is, um, is sort of, again, a little bit more sparse. But when I lay the two over the top, you can see how you're looking into it and it really is telling a story. So the other things that we're going to need as we're working, good old fashioned foam squares. These are a little darling when it comes to making this particular project. I'm going to be using some glue gel. I'm also, I've got some tape and I'm going to need some book binding glue. And all of those items are going to make my life a little bit easier for making this project. So four different types of glue. Now this is really interesting when you are crafting, thinking, do you really need all those different things? Well, actually, yes you do, because it's like having the right drill bit to make the right size hole, the right tool for the right job. So, to make sure that I can actually see what I'm doing, I've put this piece of card underneath. So as I'm assembling my project, I can see what this is going to look like and I can actually start to get the dimension and a, and a feel for the overview of the whole project. And just putting a few of these pieces in like this here and you can see how I can actually work with the the piece that I've got there but to get started we're going to build the back first because it's the bit of the big story that we want to work with and 
So I open up my acetate and I'm just going to reverse that score line so that it now will stay just open as it is here. And then I'm going to start to put my project together. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of my super sticky tape and I'm going to take it over diagonally. <clears throat> So for anybody who's just joined us, thank you so much for joining. If you watched the earlier show, could you just put a little message in and tell us you watched that too? And also, if you've already got your crown and glory kit, please let me know that too, because um, I know we've packed a lot. So I'm, I'm thinking there's quite a few of you out there. So that's the first part of it. Then let's take a look at what else we want. So I'm just going to put behind here. I'm just going to tuck these behind for the moment and put my little bits of honeysuckle just there. And then I'm going to take some lupins and I think we're going to put those just here. And I'm now going to need some of this. And I'm going to need some more lupins. So. I think we need to snip into these. So remember, when to make the most of both of these designs, I want to keep this stem. It doesn't matter if I lose a little bit of that petal, but the stem would look, wouldn't look as good if there was a piece cut out. So take it right the way down the stem so it's perfect. Your stem stays really good. And then if you've got a hard edge on a petal, you can just trim that round so you can see how now they are completely separated but both of them look pristine I'm also going to take out that little leaf and save that and I'm going to take out these there and I'm going to go down my stem so I've now created three separate well four actually if I count the other leaf but I've got these extra pieces that I can now build my design with so I'm going to just start to assemble this but for anybody I'm just understanding how many of you have watched before and how many of you are new and I just need to share this tip with you and it's the only one I'm really trying not to repeat what I did earlier so I'll make it super quick for you if you look at these two designs that I've got here, this one, the edges of it look really nice and you can see they're shaded and they look great. This one, you can see the white edges. And the only difference is to make this sturdy, I've put an extra layer of white card on the back, but to make this one sturdy, I've used green. So I chose something that was complementary, and you can see him up here, it isn't lined up properly, but when I turn it over, it still looks aesthetically really pleasing. The other thing that I've done is I've got my um, hummingbird here. And my little hummingbird, to make him dimensional, I've got one that had a bit of an accident with a bit of paper. So I still decided that I would use him rather than throw him away. His beak, I've trimmed away at that, top, that edge there. So I've only got a single beak. And now I've got his full wing that you can see here. Now I'm just going to snip into that part of the wing. This is different to the way that we did it earlier. So I'm snipping, that's the back wing and I'm just getting a little bit of extra um, movement from there. And then this one, I'm going to snip into all the different little fen, um, fronds. Now, when I snip into these, what will happen is you will end up with some wings looking like that and being sharp on these edges. If you are somebody that loves perfection and real attention to detail, just go in and take out those tiny little pips. So you take it in and you snip and you take it out, and I do the same thing, and I'm just snipping. Now you can see that they're much more softly shaped, and it really does make the difference between it looking 
um, beautifully finished or incredible. And I like incredible, so let's get on with having that. And it only takes a minute to do all of this. Now, the reflections, everybody, are on the Highlight Crafts website, so you can be downloading them while you're waiting for your dies to arrive. And um, we are all ready and have packed. Anything that was ordered before this show, I'm pretty sure has been packed and is on its way to you. So that is super duper exciting. Now, I'm just going to push these up and get a little bit of extra dimension, but I don't like the fact that they've got white edges. So if I go into my fine liner pens and I just pick one of these, all I'm going to do is take the pen and I'm just going to run along this white edge, just like here, chosen a color that is complementary and tonal, but not identical. But what I've got then is the edges, I've just got a little bit I've missed there, the edges of these feathers, when they turn up now, look much, much nicer than they did before. So you get a, a more complimentary finish to them. So just gonna make sure they're all together. I snipped back the, the, um, his beak. So I'm now gonna put a little bit of this glue on his beak, which just make sure that that little hole is free and put a tiny bit there, a little bit on his tail and our foam squares. So we take a couple of foam squares and they go in in the middle. So like that, there, just two to start with. Just take the back off, I'll just pop that one down for a second and take the back off. And then I'm gonna take a third and fourth and just pop those there. And this is then going to give us some dimension. So his tail goes flat to there, his beak goes straight on. And then if I just lift these wings a tiny little bit and the ones at the back, we're now getting really, really dimensional. And when I turn him to the front, look at there, he looks lovely, really does look three dimensional. So um, he's ready to go into our project and I'm ready to start building with all these elements. So we've got the tape on the back and I'm going to take off that tape. So let's get that off and we'll turn this over so we're not distracted by that line going to take the first of the pieces and I want to make sure that my um, looping doesn't come too high. So if I check my box height, I'm about at the top of the box. So I know that this needs to sit between those two lines. So I don't want to let anything go above those two lines. If, it, if that does happen, which I found that I did make a mistake with this one. Well, not a mistake, but it was part of the experimental process. I found it had got a little bit too high. All I did was trim a tiny bit from the bottom and then let these flowers just almost sit so that they were sitting on the base of the box. So that's the start of my um, story that I've got there. Now I need to fill it out and get this detail in. Now, I want to put my clematis honeysuckle, I beg your pardon, in here. And so I'm gonna take off that little piece just there. I want it to tuck so that it tucks round inside the loopings like this. So you can see that that's coming round to that part of the looping. And I, but I also need to make sure that this is stuck onto the card. So this is where I'm going to take another foam square. And it's a, there's a little bit of trial and error here till you get used to 
where to put things to get the dimension. So I'm just, oops, that dropped off the wrong place. I want you there. So just going to take that. I think this is probably um, one of my favourite collections this year. Um, and it's great that you guys can see these different ways of being able to work with it. So you can see that that is actually holding it against that little dot that I've got there. And then this part, and this was the bit that I spent ages just working through using my foam squares and lifting elements of it and just getting dimension. So that's now had held there. So immediately you can see, and this is this was what made that look so nice, was you've got elements behind, elements in front and elements on top. So getting those layers are really going to make a difference to make sure that this all stays really pristine. I'm just going to lift this piece back and put the tiniest little bit of wet glue just underneath that petal there. So I'm going to use that petal as an anchor and just get that shaped just there. OK, so that's the first part of it. I now want to bring in some more loopings. So I've got another one that I'm going to snip into just here. So remember, we go straight down the stem, tidy up that little leaf, because if you don't, you'll regret it later. And I'm going to take this one off here. So I'm going to do a little bit of decoupage, but I'm only going to do one layer. You want to see three layers. You saw us doing that earlier. So I'm just going to take that one out and just going to congratulations Annette because I think you've just ordered yours and you um, are going to get that free gift again and I'm so sorry everybody I've got to tell you about it but that but it is everybody who's ordered is getting it so it'll be a surprise it'll just be nice surprise um, oh yeah there won't be a surprise because I've told you um, that one's just going to go on there it's a bit I've just wrecked it my little foam pad. Right, so here we go. So this is the foam. That's a, just the back end. And I'm going to use this part to help anchor it. So I thought about how much of the stem I needed to make this anchor. And then I'm going to lay that just there. And I purposely are going to just slide that Okay, I thought I'd thought about which layer it needed to be. I'm one layer too many. So I'm just going to take that piece out. I planned that I counted for that bit, but I don't think I did count it enough. That's just going to tuck under there and press down. So we've got the foam giving it that little bit of dimension that we've got there. OK, right. So starting to I'm starting to see dimension in this. So I'm just going to lift it up and let you see. And you can you gives you an idea of how that is starting to look. We'll get um, we'll get you a, being able to have a quick look at this one because you can see that that just looks so dimensional. Right. Let's keep adding into it so we can see what we where we go next. So um, I need another loop in. So I want another loop in that's going to come over here. But I don't want to waste that leaf because I know that I'm going to put some other designs. So that one's going to go there. And now we can see the honeysuckles weaving its way through the flowers. So it's coming behind and then in front. This one is going to go next. So some more foam. Just clean that off. And I, can you all remember when we first had foam pads and how much time we used to spend with these little tiny pads? And it just reminded me today how long, how many hours I've spent picking off foam pads and just literally getting dimension to my projects. But it also reminded me of how useful they were. And I was quite excited when I got them out again and I've not used them for a while you know a little foam pad like that makes you happy 
So I've got some foam pads. I've got three in the middle, two at one end and one at the back. A little bit of dimension on that project there. And that one is going to go just there. Then the next thing is I want another one of my regular loopins, and that one is going to go here. So I'm going to get some extra dimension with that one. Maybe even might pull it forward. I think it might look good if it was at a better angle, something like that. But before we put this on, let's go into our fabulous design here. And I need to make sure that this is not catching too close to this inside edge because I don't want to um, have a problem where it, the, my little book won't close. Shaping it round and getting dimension to the whole thing and making that sit so that we've got lots of de detail over the top. And that looks stunning. It also gives me the chance to see where I want to put my foliage. So I can start to think about how this is going to sit inside there. And I can see that that's going to fit beautifully. So I'm going to lift that off and put this piece of foliage in first. So let's have a think about how I can anchor it. Well, first of all, if I put some glue on the front, just there, and some glue on the back of that stem, I can go underneath those leaves and attach it there. So that's one part of it. Just press that down so it catches the back of the loop in. I've still got the tape across here. I'm now going to tuck in one of my leaves. I've got to decide where that's going to go because I want a bit more detail. Um, I think I might just place it over the top there. No, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to save it until this is in. Right, let's have a look at you. So. Remember, I've got that double sided diamond or line across my work. So I've now been able to, can you see how just using that line that I'd got, I've actually got this in, shape, in place and I've been able to keep my shape. This is where I come in and I put my glue gel, just wants to come out a little bit. I always, and this makes me laugh because I just think one day I'm just going to press really hard and the whole thing is just going to squirt out. But you can see how we've built that, that design and it's looking really nice. Actually, I'm just going to just pull this round a little bit there. Um, I've got some more detail I need to fill in at the bottom. I've got this lovely little loop in top that's spare and don't want to miss that. So I'm going to pop that in. So we'll put some tape on the bottom, um, some glue on the bottom of that and fill in just there. Um, I've got a little bit of tape at the bottom that needs covering because otherwise it's going to leave us with a sticky mark and that's just here. So I've taken off that leaf and I'm just going to let this one, so I need to shape it round. I'm going to let that one just sit there. And I need to then snip into it to make it go along the petal. So let's just get you over there. So that's that part. Keep that dimension. That glue's got to dry. So you can see why I'm using, I'm limiting how much of the um, glue gel that I actually use. And everybody, if this was a flat card, this would still go through the post because the acetate is strong enough to ping back, uh, but it also does protect the design. Um, I think I need, let's have a little look at how this is working out. Right, I've got a couple of places I could do with an anchor. One of them's there. So let's just check that. And then I'm going to check the height of it. So remember, I marked here. I might just be going over a tiny bit. So I'm going to take that bud off, that little tiny bud at the top, just to be on the safe side. But I'm not going to leave it scruffy. So I'm just going to snip that in so that it does look like it was meant to be like that. 
hold that down for a second and we're just about there on this back panel except for one more piece of our honeysuckle and that piece needs to go in this gap here so let's have a look at what it needs to be so i think i need to snip into it there and want to put that if i snip into it here as well and just there i'm going to take out that stem because i think it's going to spoil it and i'm going to pop that piece do we want it behind or in front i think we want a combination behind to start with and then in front and i am going to separate these two out so let's pop that piece there you can see that's that really lends itself to go in there and this piece lends itself to go in there so let's um let's think about where this glue on the front on this one because it's going to go behind these pieces oops tuck you in there we go a little bit my glues actually probably should be on the back as well so let's tuck you in there and then this one is going to go on to the back so let's make sure that's there a bit of glue just on there and i'm going to tuck that right in here so that it's just peeking out like that okay so there we go we're just getting that in place and that is feeling like it needs a foam pad behind it so i'm going to get a couple of those just get them together two together and just slide that underneath there and get that little bit of dimension that we we know adds to making it look pretty so let's get you on there i can feel that on my finger tuck it under and we're there okay so I'm, I'm quite happy with the way that that's coming on now so that's the inside of our project but I now need to work on the outside so the way to do that is to fold this down I'm just going to put that over the top so I'm not distracted too much by all the detail that I've got but I can keep checking and looking at what I'm doing so um, the re and the reason that I, I looked at the front and I did some dimensional work and you saw how that was going to look. But the reason that I didn't start on the front completely is because if I'd started on the front and then had to open it, it's harder. You need to work from the back forwards. You'll get a better result if you do. So and it's also it's easier for some reason, much easier. So double sided tape here, partly for speed, but also because I know that my um, pink layer glue is gonna take a few minutes to dry when I put that on there and take that just over the edge of the card. Just checking the height again. Going to come in with my fabulous flowers. I'm going to put those to the bottom, not worrying about it coming over the edge because remember I can just lift that a little bit. So let's get this one on with a little bit of tape to start with just on that let me see where I need it there and there so now I can shape this round and shape this round I know that's the bit that's going to make be in contact with the actual acetate so I'm shaping it getting some dimension so look at how I've got these undulations and the shape that I've created there then take that piece off and that's going to be the first part of our decoupage on the front so come on I need to get that pokey tool in so just in there and this one here and hello to everybody who's just joined it's a real pleasure to have your company we are celebrating our birthday this week so anybody that orders over £25 will actually get a, um, a free gift with your purchase. So that's a little bit exciting for us. 
And the other thing that I also need to tell you, <gasps> look at that, look at how that is coming together. Wow, that's just super gorgeous, really is. And you can see this looks like a bush of those flowers. Um, and what we're doing is we're giving everybody a free gift with purchase. Um, if you spend over £25, that's you're going to get your free gift, which is actually the collection. If you are a Robin's Nest member, you get free postage over £25 for a year. So that's always worth thinking about and having. And you can order it on the website or you can even phone us within business hours if you want to. Right. And our phone number for anybody who hasn't got it. 033 00 88 uh, eight on the end and it's actually it's on the bottom of the screen but it's also our customer service number so if we can ever help you oh and look at this now there aren't many of these left they're gonna sell out but oh it's lovely it's all embroidered and i've got all my patterns in here i'm just gonna get a few more um little loopings and also apparently i've just been told there's three for two on wallets Ooh, that's why amanda's stocking up she told me she wanted to stock up and that'll be why. Right, so a bit of card back in again, so I'm not distracted by the design. Into my loop in here, take that, make sure that, that petal is um, well rounded. Take this part of it. And remember, I put the tape across the body of the actual design so I can still tuck things in. I've still got lots of room to be able to get that and look how far in I've been able to tuck that element. So now to make sure it stays where it needs to, get a little bit of adhesive on there, give that a bit more shape. We need some more leaves and I need to get, definitely I need one under here. Right, this is um, a dilemma. I want to put that leaf under there, but I've already glued it. So how am I going to rectify what I've already done? So I'm going to take my leaf and I'm just going to trim that flat. And I've got a little bit of glue there and a little bit on here. Um, Donna, yes, thank you. I did fix my nail problem. <laughs> you did notice. Um, what happened? I came on and I lost one. And the best bit was when I went back to the team, I actually had to tell them that I'd lost one and that somebody was going to find it. So that wasn't, I was actually very glad that I did find it. Okay, so now because I'm getting distracted by that back design, I'm going to cover the whole thing. So I can now see that this is looking balanced. It's giving me a better perspective of the design. Um, I'm loving the fact that I've still got these that are part of the um, loop-ins, but I haven't really used them. So I want to get a couple of these in. So I'm just going to shape up the petals a little bit and then take some adhesive and put that on the back and just make sure that that catches to that petal there. Then I need to look at this. I think it's still not balanced. I need another loop into the front. Needs another one here. You can see how that's going to add to it and make it more interesting, more dimensional. So I've just, again, put the glue along the stem, shaped it with my fingers, and I'm just going to tuck that under until I can catch it and get that to hold in place. Don't want to make sure I don't squash that flower too much. So I've got a bit of dimension. Then I've got, um, and this was one that I did earlier that's got all the decoupage already on it. And you can see those elements. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one and decoupage two of these flowers. So I'm coming into the main body of the flower here cutting out that back petal because we don't need that. That's the one that's furthest away. I'm actually going to take out this one too. So I'm bringing those scissors round. So I've only got the stamen, the petal at the back and 
the one that's right at the very front. And by doing that, I have given myself an extra little bit of dimension. That's gonna go on with some glue gel, which I've got just there. I'm just gonna push that into place. So you can see what I'm doing now and look at how that construction acetate is just supporting the whole design. It really is, is um, so easy to work with. That needs to come up. You can see I didn't press that one in place. Let me just get that pressed in place. And then I just need to decoupage this flower here. Um, let me see what I've got, where I've got this one. This one will do it. Just get my finger off, stuck myself to the finger. I won't stuck myself to um, the steering wheel when I was, oh, actually, when I was doing my nails in the car one day, I stuck myself to the steering wheel. It took me ages to get it off. And I had to gradually just, like, I got a pair of tweezers and tweezer my fingers off. And it took all my fingerprints. So, yeah, that was a that was an interesting time. And it left all the glue on the steering wheel. It wasn't it wasn't good. It's a good job it was my car and not my ex-husband's. Anyway, because this husband he wouldn't have minded, but the other one might have. Where did that come from? Anyway, here we go. So right, there we that's that bit. So I'm just gonna place that one over the top. So I'm really liking that I've got some lovely dimension to this story. Now let's do the reveal. So before we do that, I'm going to just move all this away so we're not distracted by it. And then look, wow. I mean, that is just lovely, but we haven't finished. So I have got a little hummingbird that we made earlier. And where is he? here and he needs to go in here somewhere so I'm going to put him behind that looping but in front of the others and I've got to make sure he isn't going to stick out of the top of the box so actually he's going to go there yep that's where he's going to go so let's have a look at how he's going to fit on there so he needs a foam pad on the back because I don't want him too close to the flower. I could stick him straight onto there, but I don't want that to happen. I don't know whether he is a boy or a girl, but for the purpose of this, it's a boy hummingbird, because I'm calling him him. And I actually don't know if you can tell the difference. I bet that's quite a hard thing to do, know whether hummingbirds are boys or girls. Maybe there's an expert out there that can tell us. A hummingbird expert. Have you ever seen them? They are so, so tiny. Right, so this one is going to go here. And I'm just going to, oh, I've put my phone too high. So it needs to go lower. Right, okay, so that foam doesn't feel like it wants to stick. So let me show you another little trick. So rather than waste it, we'll stick that down. And then you get some red liner tape, just the smallest amount, but you have to take the red liner tape from one side of the foam, so from the paper over the foam to the other side, otherwise it doesn't work, it just pulls off. So, ah, oh, and apparently my lovely producer has just told me that male hummingbirds have a, an orange pattern on their throat and it's called, called a gorget. And females don't have them, so this one's a lady. Sorry, Fred, I've been calling her a boy. There you go, so that's it now, there. But I want a little tiny one at the front. And so I'm going to use the smallest piece of acetate that we've got, a little tiny strip like that. I'm going to get a tiniest bit of our tape there. While you're all watching, can I just mention tomorrow night, I've got a free painting class. And um, anybody who wants to join, who thinks they might be interested in learning to paint, 
please, it's on Zoom, so come along and you could pre-register on that. Oh, where did that ping to? Oh, where are you? Oh, good job, I've got another piece. Um, you can pre, oh, it's there. Pre-register on the Highlight Crafts website and we'll send you the link. But I'm going to be teaching you all decorative painting. So if anybody wants to join our monthly club, and as I said, it is free, um, come along tomorrow and get just get a feel for what we're doing. And um, I seem to think there could be quite a few of us, but that is brilliant because I've I painted at the weekend and I'm so chuffed with what I managed to do that I'm really looking forward to being able to share it tomorrow and hopefully get us all on this painting journey. Right, so there's my little piece that I need, which is just that piece of acetate, but I now need a little hummingbird. So I'm going into my stash of hummingbirds and look at all of these. <laughs> and I'm going to get a little one here. There, this one, and we've used we've used the one that we shaped earlier, and I'm just putting this one there, so it's stuck to that part of the back and held together there, and then we've got our little hummingbirds, and let's just have a look at how we've created that dimensional project. Right, I'm just gonna squeeze the sides of my book. Oops. That's why you have to make sure you use the foam pads as you go along. But that just gives us the dimension that we've got. Now, let's have a look. Oh, did I get too high? Oh, I think I might. Let's have a look if it's gonna fit in the box. So, I might need to use my little secret Oh, there we go. It's getting stuck there. Oh. Right. right, there it is in our box. And I'm just going to close that over. It's a tiny bit too tall. So I'm going to come on to my opening. And don't forget, everybody, if you order from us at the moment, you can get that free gift and even everybody that ordered from us earlier, anybody that's spending 25 pounds or over gets free gift. And while we've got stock of it, it's this USB. That's a bit exciting. Right, see this piece I've cut off. I'm not gonna waste that and throw it away because that's how I get all those little hummingbirds. But let me just double check it. See if there are any other elements that I feel I might want to change. I'm going to move that hummingbird down a tiny little bit just to make sure that I'm not over the top. I'm still over the top. There we go. Wiggle it a bit. It will fit in perfectly now. And there is my hummingbird. Okay, so how just, it's just like you've got this little way of displaying it um, and it just is the most fun way of getting dimension with all of these elements and that's what we've managed to do. So I'm just going to show you a few of the projects that I did earlier and let's just get you a bit tighter to close so that you don't miss out. So you can come different shapes. Let's look at them here so I'll get a piece of clean card. So. Here's one of them for you. Look, lots of it in dimension, just single, um, a single layer. Another one here, single layer, but with dimension. I really like this one because I think it looks light and elegant as we go up the top. This one, I've been thinking about this because I feel it's not balanced. And what it's missing is a little bit of foliage. And it can be as simple as putting a tiny bit of foliage in, which in fact that piece we don't need, there. And look at how much, how suddenly that becomes so much more balanced. Let me take it out, put it back in. You can see, really just adds to the balance. And then, of course, I've got another one here, which 
just one more, one more, we can see again, just so beautiful and pretty. Okay, I'm just gonna give everybody a quick look at what we've got and what we worked with. Um, just before you think about whether you want to just go for this collection, the Crown and Glory, you could as well also add that acetate into your basket. Don't forget oh, that acetate, I just think this is gonna be one of the next things that becomes a must have staple in our crafty stash. Then we've got a couple of other good deals for you. This one, oh gosh, wow. It went crazy this afternoon when everybody saw the price because of course you can put everything in these little um, pots because they just become containers for your flowers. And that one is our Overlook die. Then we've got the teapot. Yes, and I did the teapot and I thoroughly enjoyed this because I actually made this as a project um, when we did our last show and you can see how pretty that is. So don't forget everybody, if you haven't joined Robin's Nest, we'd love you to join us. Please join me tomorrow for painting. That's actually my painting class is at five to six, sorry, 6.30. Is that right? 6.30. 6.30 till 7.30. 6.30 till 7.30. So that's going to be a load of fun. And just a quick reminder of our boards. So there are the lovely hummingbirds. Let you can see those. Then you've got the lavatera. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. Then we've got the honeysuckle. Then you've got the lupins. And finally, we've got those lovely foliage leaves. Okay, wow, what an exciting day. And do you know what? It's so nice being able to be here. Next week, I'm actually going to be on Crate and Craft quite a bit, and I'm, I've got loads of fabulous stuff. In fact, I'm going to be launching something brand new. But let's just see some of these comments. Wow, that is beautiful. Thank you for sharing with us. Loving this. I'll be watching tomorrow night. Um, I can't wait. Um, let's have a look. We're loving this stuff. Stunning. Thank you for sharing this wonderful idea. Oh, do you know what? You got are just lovely. Hey, my dad's been busy, hasn't he, writing all of this lot? And this is just all oh, these names he's come up with. He's not normally that creative. I'm, I'm joking, everybody. It has just been an absolute pleasure. And, look, this is the naughty bit. So... So I've got to, I have to say that this, the lovely Kath Westwood helped me with this. This was her design. But what I wanted to draw your attention to is these koi carp in there. Look at them. They're, that's a bit of acetate and the koi carp are in there. And can I just share with you one last little thing? This probably will get me into trouble. I don't mean to offend anybody, but it's, um, it's just nature. So in our garden, we've got a pond. You've probably seen it. I've got this lovely weeping willow tree. But we also have a heron. And the heron has been particularly hungry. I'm wondering if maybe she might have some chicks. But anyway, she's been coming and visiting the garden and actually helping herself probably once or twice a day, some days, not every day, because I think there's a variety of ponds. She likes to visit lots of different restaurants locally. And so we went shopping at the weekend to get some more fish for the pond, because it was also that time of year where it needed topping up. So I said to Carl, we've got, why are you choosing so many different colours? He said, when I get home, I'm going to write a menu board for the heron. I was absolutely mortified, but very, very happy because the pond is quite muddy. Um, it's quite dark. And as soon as we put them in, they disappeared into the darkness, not to be seen until they're a lot bigger. So, Mrs. Heron, if you're watching this, please can you actually go and feed somewhere else? And <laughs> Listen, lots of love, everybody. You are the best. Thank you so much. And don't forget you'll get your reflections on the Highlight Crafts website. See you all soon. <laughs>